Hello everyone, today we have a massive mid-season update to talk about the March 5th seasonal update. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna timestamp this video so you can skip wherever you want to. You know, I'm gonna be talking about rocket changes, bait and switch nerf, you know, new perks, uh, new, you know, reprised weapons, lots of crazy different stuff, prophecy changes. Um, and we're gonna talk about all of it in order. So let's start with new weapons. We have a whole host of new weapons. I have a bunch of tabs open from uh, D2 Foundry, so we're gonna go over them one by one. And then, um, yeah, we're going to move on after that. So first we have this scout rifle. It's like the, the DMT frame scout rifle from Trials. Uh, since I'm a PVP, sorry, not PVP, a PVE content creator, um, I'm just going to be focusing on the PVE rules. Um, aggressive frame scout rifles, pretty bad in PVE. Uh, I've highlighted some of the perks here, but, you know, I don't think this is worth grinding for PVE whatsoever. Uh, for PVP, maybe, but, you know, PVE, not so much. So we're going to skip past that. Uh, the summoner. This is a lot better than previous iterations of the summoner from Trials. Um, I might actually get one of these. I'm not sure. It has subsistence onslaught. Obviously, subsistence is really good on auto rifles and uh, SMGs because you get basically almost enhanced subsistence levels of reload, um, but without an, an enhanced perk. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it also has incandescent, which I believe it had before, if I'm not mistaken, um, but it also has heal clip now, which is nice. But I think the subsistence onslaught is a, is a pretty good combination. It also has wild card as well, um, which makes it better for ad clear. Um, I don't know if it's gonna like dethrone stuff like uh you know the enlightened action incandescent role from like crota's end but um you know it's still pretty decent i think uh decent archetype as well um next up we have the slammer now this has drawn a lot of attention from the end game pv community mostly because it is the first eager edge sword that we have gotten since the very first ones came out with dares of eternity all that time ago during what was it year four yeah oh my that was a long time ago so eager edge sword now of course, some of us are a little bit disheartened because you can't craft this sword. It is a GM Nightfall reward, right? Um, so unfortunately, yeah, you can't craft it, which means you don't get Enhanced Eager, which is like a big draw. However, those of us who were around during the crafting bug during that time, we know that Enhanced Eager Edge is not a necessity on a Vortex frame. The light attack will go a, you know, a shorter distance, but heavy attacks on vortex frames do propel you further than heavy attacks on adaptive frames. So I'm curious to see how that plays out. And additionally, Bungie did say at some point in the last year that they are interested in making some of the adept weapons from uh, non raids become enhanceable. So maybe you'll see an enhanceable slammer at some point if you hold on to one with eager edge. On top of that, it's stasis. So it has access to cold steel, which is nice. Um, a lot of the Eager Edge Sword perks on, you know, uh, the other half and half truths are not great. They're kind of just there to be there. But we have, you know, Demo, which is nice. We have Cold Steel, which is nice. Uh, Paint and Switch, which is interesting. I don't think it's going to be useful, but certainly interesting as well. So definitely uh, worth looking out for. And uh, I'm excited to farm Slammer. So this is a sword that I didn't particularly expect to be liking. And on the flip side, what I did expect to be liking was this Wild Style Adept Grenade Launcher. Uh, this was supposed to be the replacement for Wilderflight. As you guys all know, Wilderflight is the swap GL, damage GL weapon of choice right now if you're doing like an Apex Predator rotation. And the only thing that's bad about it is that it does not have a solar affinity to match the Apex Predator solar weapon surge. Now, unfortunately, we all saw, right, endgame PV community, had we had our hopes high. We all saw the Wild Style Adept. It's a solar double fire. It's from GM Nightfalls. Bungie likes putting good perks on their GM Nightfall weapons. We've seen this in the past with weapons like Hothead. And unfortunately, um, <laughs> you know, I mean, if you've been following this channel at all and you're looking at these perks, you know, uh, <clears throat> Not looking too good. <laughs> so first of all, we have no auto loading perks. So there's no reconstruction, no auto loading, nothing like that. And the best reload perks that we could maybe even hope to use are like envious. So before a damage phase, you could maybe get three in the mag on this thing. And then I guess during damage, you typically don't really shoot more than three GL shots if you're doing a proper rocket dump. So it's not the end of the world that you only have three in the mag. But if we look at the damage perks, that's where this thing really goes to die because the bungee what is this like what were you going for here like with a weapon like hothead or even a weapon like comedian it's fairly obvious what kind of identity or role bungee assumes that the role you know the weapon is going to take i don't know what this weapon is trying to do like it has one for all so they want it to be like an ad clear gl but then it doesn't have it's a double fire so like it doesn't do good ad clear it has incandescent and permeability I mean, I guess surrounded on like some bosses, but that, that just seems a bit silly. And then attrition orbs is like horrible on GLs. It requires so many hits. 
Um, I don't know if it says 12 hits here. I don't know if the impact and the explosion count as separate hits. That means you can get an orb every three shots, but still that's pretty bad. Um, and then like collective action, right? I mean, you have the tight perk pool of a GM weapon, which is good, but all of these perks are like horrible. <laughs> so, you know, truly, truly a shame what happened to wild style. I guess I'll be farming Wilderflight if I care about a double fire GL. I mean, Wilderflight is just better in every way, man. It has auto, lead from gold. It has Frenzy, it has Vorpal, it has everything you could want from a, you know, like a Blinding Jail or like a Damage Jail. And this just is not, like, what am I looking at? Anyways, you know, let's, let's, you know, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, you know, let's not think about that. Um, in, in better news, in better news, we have the Tusk of the Boar Strand Waveframe from Iron Banner. So, I'm sure you guys are all aware, New Pacific Epitaph is the only waveframe in the kinetic slot right now. And while it is decent, it has, you know, some interesting perks, it has like demo, it has a redirection, this comes with chain reaction. And of course, you can't beat chain reaction on a waveframe. Uh, Forbearance has really, you know, taken that point and hammered it home. Um, but there are some interesting things that I do want to note about this waveframe. So, we've never had deconstruct on a waveframe before, uh, or any grenade launcher as far as I'm concerned. And um, Bungie did say in the patch notes that they are fixing deconstruct to work properly with explosive weapons, aka the grenade launcher. And from what I understand here, it says that the activation requirement for Deconstruct is 50% of the mag rounded down plus two hits. So on a waveframe, that's hitting three enemies. And hitting three enemies with a waveframe is really easy. And so theoretically, I don't know how this is going to work, but if in, in, in my head, theoretically, how this weapon works is when you hit three enemies with your waveframe within six seconds, which is like insanely easy, right? You get a free reload and free ammo from thin air which is like very good for a waveframe to have. That's like very, very good, right? That's like an infinite ammo waveframe. And you don't have to reload. That's a reload perk too. So, you know, uh, hopefully it ends up being what I think it ends up being. If not, it's still a chain reaction waveframe. So that's good. Um, so it looks like I'll be farming Iron Banner instead of GMs uh, this week, or not this week, but in general. Um, it also has Slice. Uh, slice seems like it's pretty decent on a waveframe because you kill a lot of ads with the waveframes. You know, you can constantly apply it to a bunch of different enemies. Slideways is always, you know, welcome on a, a single shot weapon. And Enlightened Action, you know, this thing's base reload is not that great, but Enlightened Action can help cover for that if you just want a decent neutral perk. So, Tusk of the Boar, pretty decent. Pretty good. Pretty happy with that. Better than expected with, with Wild, you know, Wild Style being a lot worse than expected. Okay. The other weapon from Iron Banner that's getting a perk refresh is Multimock. Multimock is coming back, and I'm happy to say, um, when I was doing my primary video, I was looking through all the different primers in the game, and I was like, you know, we don't really have a really solid kinetic SMG, right? I mean, we have like Submission, which is okay, it has like Overflow Frenzy, you know, it's a decent archetype, it's craftable, but Multimock is really hit it out of the park here. I mean, we have Attrition Orbs, we have Frenzy, both of these, I've been waiting for a weapon with both of these perks, and a good archetype like an SMG that's a 900, both of these perks, as well as kinetic tremors and a decent remember this thing's a lightweight so you know it doesn't feel horrible to reload and um you know it has a under over as well so like it has all of the most of the perks that i'm looking for if it had enlightened action in the first column plus kinetic tremors that would be amazing amazing like frenzy kinetic tremors would be awesome as well but i'm not complaining this is definitely like the kinetic smg that i'm going to farm if i want a kinetic smg for pve so pretty excited about this happy about this um, next up we have the heavy waveframe. So until now, the only heavy waveframe in the game has been dimensional hypotrachoid. Uh, going along with that trend, Bungie has decided to name this, uh, gun an equally interesting name, Hullabaloo, which is, uh, I don't know who at Bungie came up with that name, but interesting for sure. Um, this comes in hand with, uh, a 40% width buff to heavy waveframes, which we'll talk about in a second, as well as a 20% damage buff to heavy waveframes as well. Uh, I don't think this is going to become meta for damage or anything, uh, but certainly this has better perks than Dimensional did. It has a um, Volt Shot Chain, right, which could be potentially interesting as an ad clear option, especially with the Jail Reserve buff, which is what a heavy uh, waveframe desperately needed. I think it only got like 19 or something originally. Um, and then you have like Auto, which is decent. I mean, I don't foresee this thing being used for damage, but maybe it'll be good for damage. Who knows? So um, yeah, I'm going to test this out in, in the near future. But for now, you know, keep keep looking out for this, you know, auto, envious, field, bolt shot, great first column. Um, not anything insane in the second column for damage, but cascade point is certainly interesting, and chain reaction is always welcome on an ad clear weapon. Okay, moving on, we have the prophecy weapons. So uh, Bungie got rid of a couple prophecy weapons, I think like Swift Verdict, Long Walk, and I'm forgetting the other one. 
Um, I think the auto rifle, I think it was, yeah, I think it was the last breath. And um, Bungie added Adjudicator, so a kinetic SMG. They added Relentless, so a Strand Pulse Rifle. And they also added Prosecutor, uh, which is an Arc Auto. Is that right? Yeah, an Arc Auto. So um, three primaries. So, you know, shout out for that. Removing a special, three, three primaries added. You know, unfortunate. Um, however, this SMG is okay. It's okay, right? It has Sub Onslaught, which again, I've mentioned that on um, on the Summoner. It's a, it's a great perk combination for just like slaying out that kind of like year one two kind of vibe in, in terms of weapons that are just slaying out with like pre-nerf rampage this is kind of the same uh weapon identity not so much flash damage more so just raw ripping through with uh raw bullets um however it is a precision frame so i in my opinion i'm gonna really you know side with multi mock on this one uh, but onslaught is pretty nice and um you know who knows it could be worth trying out uh prophecy weapons also come with a new origin trait which is called crossing over um it seems to just work like high impact reserves and uh sort of synergy kind of combined i think uh which is interesting um yeah i don't know how much the bottom half of the mag uh mag increase actually does um but you know primaries are all not really damage weapons for the most part so i don't think this is going to impact like dps or end game pve in that way um because the long walk obviously isn't getting crossing over because it's removed from the pool so, I don't know. People will do damage testing with this, I'm sure. Uh, I don't expect the origin trait to be, like, a huge game changer, though. Okay. Um, Relentless. Yeah, this thing is not great. I mean, it has, like, some, some strand synergy perks, like Slice Hashling, but I really don't think they're worth investing into. I mean, Rapid Hit Frenzy is nice for, like, a feel-good weapon, but, again, it's a strand pulse rifle, and it's high impact. I don't think uh, this is particularly, a, you know, a strong pick for, for PvE. Uh, we have Darkest Before. Yeah, Darkest Before, it's a Rapid Fire. Rapid Fire Pulses are decent in PvE. Uh, this thing does have access to, like, uh, Attrition Orbs. It has access to Heal Clip, Incandescent. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, uh, there, there's just better Pulse Rifles, I think, right now. Like, the Crota Pulse Rifle is, like, Oversoul Edict is excellent. I don't think this is going to be dethroning that weapon anytime soon. So, you know, all decent weapons, um, but I think there's better choices for the most part in other parts of the game. Um, Prosecutor, this is decent, I think. Um, I'm not sure if it's better than the best primaries that we've talked about in the energy slot when it comes to add clear, but it does have Dragonfly Volt Shot, which is nice, as well as Dragonfly Frenzy. So a splash plus a damage perk and a reload perk combined, that's pretty nice. I don't think I'm going to be farming for it, but, you know, certainly a unique role and uh, certainly nice to have. And uh, Judgment, I'm not even sure if this is an, a downgrade or an upgrade from its previous version. Um, I think, yeah, it's, a, it's Stasis now. It has like Enlightened Action and Time Payload which is fine, I guess. I think it's just worse than Fatebringer. Um, if it got like Demo Headstone, it'd be kind of, I don't know. This weapon's not that great. Um, honestly, I think I'd even take Aya's Luna over this weapon. Um, just because Headstone is in the second slot and you get like Rapid Hit with it. If Headstone was in like the second slot here, I think it'd be more interesting. But like even Headstone time payload, yeah. Not 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 the biggest fan with, uh, with no reload buff. Okay, all right. Finally, we have a Sudden Death. Uh, which has had its affinity changed to void. I think is this the only special weapon that drops from prof now? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a kind of a shame, I suppose. Um, yeah, this thing is it's still an aggressive. I guess it competes with the comedian. Um, in terms of competing with the comedian, this thing doesn't have uh, vorpal. I think like the comedian does. It does have trench barrel though, and we're gonna talk about trench barrel, which has gotten a buff recently for a quality of life change. Um, this is a really good trench barrel shotgun. I'm happy with that. Not really using it for one-two punch, but uh, trench barrel is certainly nice. Discord is also interesting on an aggressive frame shotgun as well. Um, but, you know, this is more like a, just like kind of a mid-tier weapon. Nothing worth uh, grinding, in my opinion. Finally, we have the two new versions with new perk pools of the Guardian Games weapons, the title and Taraxippos. Uh, the title, I mean, um, again, kind of like last year, pretty disappointing. Uh, if you don't want to deal with the 23 base reload, you kind of have to take Threat Detector, which is, you know, better version of Perpetual Motion on SMGs, in my opinion, in endgame PvE. And then uh, you have like, I don't know, Surrounded, Destabilizing, which has, uh, you know, internal cooldown uh, problems that we've talked about in, in the perk tier list. I guess you have like Repulsor Destabilizing, but again, you know, Attrition Orbs. Just dealing with this awful reload with just Threat Detector is just going to be very, very uh, not preferable. There's plenty of great energy SMGs out there. Uh, Unforgiven, Callus Mini Tool, Ikelos SMG, uh, Parabellum, you know, Subjunctive. And the title is just not one that I would consider great for endgame PvE. And uh, as our last weapon, we have Taraxippos. Uh, this hasn't really changed much from last year, as far as I can tell. I mean, uh, I've been told that, yeah, they added, like, Enlightened and Precision Instruments. Um, but yeah, I don't... It's a, it's a lightweight frame 
uh, Scout, which is a decent archetype. I think uh, they got a buff recently as well, like a 5% damage buff. But uh, I don't think that's enough to save it from it not being kinetic, first of all. There's uh, better kinetic scouts. And um, it just doesn't have any great perks in, in the first column. I guess in light actions, like, okay, we could add it on the list here. And like explosive payload, that's fine too. But, um, you know, I'd rather use a non-strand weapon to obtain that 10% unshielded bonus. Um, now let's talk about sandbox changes. So that was a long time we spent on your weapons. Uh, two things I do want to talk about that aren't like written into the patch notes because they're not like directly like something you can write, I guess. Um, Sparrow behavior has changed. So you can now just Sparrow like indefinitely and just spam boosts. Before when you were, when you had your boost active, when you were boosting with your Sparrow, your dodges, like your, your boost energy wouldn't come back. Um, now you can just spam right click. You can just spam right click over and over and over. And you can also do the same thing with skimmers and it boosts your speed. You can constantly reboost over and over and over and your boost energy will come back. And I think they changed that behavior because, you know, the, yeah, it's the same thing on skimmers. Uh, also, skimmers are just faster sparrows. I think skimmers will take over as the dominant uh, vehicle in terms of overall movement. Uh, they are just faster than sparrows. Um, you can fly uh, short horizontal distances from what I understand by uh, grinding midair, um, but I can show you a clip uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I think I'm dropping like a YouTube short, I think probably like before this video is even out. Um, but yeah, you can, you can see here, this is like very, very fast, right? Like you can spam dodges and boost while doing, while using this thing and you go very, very fast. So pretty interesting. Skimmers are, um, I don't think they're going to change like speedrun tech. I don't think, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Maybe we'll find some speedrun tech with them, but they just seem to be faster alternatives to sparrows that are a lot more maneuverable. So I'm very happy with that. Um, good change and they feel really good uh, the physics interactions are really clean and the emotes and all the all like the cool tricks you can do on them none of them look buggy so I'm glad uh, Bungie put some time and effort into that because it, it looks really cool it's a good change so I'm happy with that all right next up we have a couple of changes to weapons weapon archetypes I'm going to scroll down here past uh, gambit and stuff like this we're going to move on to this is pvp stuff here it is okay so Lightweight Scouts, don't care. That's an extremely minor change, but, uh, you know, Lightweight Scouts are nice, so shout out to Lightweight Scouts. Uh, okay, these are the big ones. These are the big ones. So, Rocket Launchers, Precision Frames, and High Impact Frames now have two more ammo. So, that means uh, Galley specifically now has 12 ammo. It has 9 by default, and has 12 if you have 3 reserve mods, which is like, why did we need to buff I don't know. I mean, I'm not complaining, sure. Uh, if you enjoy farming Legend Lost Sectors, well, now you can enjoy even more Galley. Uh, and Galley is just great in general for just more content now. Uh, having more ammo in your reserves is just always going to be better, so I'm pretty happy about that. And um, I don't know why that change had to affect Galley, but I guess Galley counts as like a precision frame internally, so we gave it 12 ammo. So, yay! Uh, I don't think this really moves the needle on precision frames, but high impact frames, this change is quite nice. So. Bungie, something that I was thinking about with Bungie is that if you're going to separate the uh, rocket frame archetypes, there shouldn't be a penalty on precisions and high impacts for no reason. And I'm really enjoying this change. I think um, they could have done maybe something different with precisions, but high impacts, I really, really like this change because rockets are basically used for two things, right? Use them for boss damage and you use them for like GMs, like ad clear with galley, right? So this makes high impact frames definitively the best rocket frame for GMs. Because that minus 10% is not going to help you that, and it's not going to hurt you that much. But you get two more ammo, which is insanely helpful for like bipod rockets, and you have increased blast radius. You have increased blast radius by base, which makes sense for a high, you know, a frame that's called high impact. So very, very happy about that. Basically, um, you know, rockets like Semiotician, rockets like uh, Braytech Osprey, rockets even like Sleepless are going to be very, very good for GMs. So I'm very, very excited for that. This is a really, really good change that kind of diversifies the, the pool of rockets that people are going to take into GMs uh, or into endgame content in the future. So I'm happy about that. Um, heavy GLs. Now, this change from what Bungie is saying sounds like uh, overall spike GLs, so or just heavy GLs in general, will basically remain around the same DPS, but they will get much more reserves. So very, very happy about that. Um, reserve buff is great for heavy GLs. Uh, that's like the one thing that we're lacking against rockets. Uh, I'm very curious. I will do more damage testing in terms of total damage and DPS and stuff like that. I will test individual um, heavy GL damage. I'm also interested to see how much this boosts explosive lights potential because there's a big shift in the damage distribution from spike impact to blast 
the, the blast itself. And as you guys know, explosive light only buffs the blast portion. So this is going to be very exciting for that as well. So I'm pretty pumped to see what heavy gels end up doing. And I will relay that testing information to you later this week when I have my Templar checkpoint and I go in there and do some testing. Um, what else do we have? Yeah, I already talked about the heavy wave GL thing. Um, interestingly enough, I've done heavy wave GL testing before. I don't think this is going to make the meta for damage or anything, but I'm curious to see what it does nonetheless. Uh, caster frames are still going to suck. I saw this change ahead of time um, in the preview for this update, and I ran the numbers on caster frames, and they're basically still just lower ammo efficiency versions of like vortex frames or adaptive frames. They're just worse. They're just worse. So unfortunate. I, I think caster frames, they should really lean into allowing that projectile to become bigger and splash and maybe hit multiple enemies to make like an ad clear sword kind of power fantasy type of thing. But um, for now, you know, caster frames just kind of suck. <laughs> they, they really suck. Okay. Um, exotic changes. Uh, none of this stuff really matters. Okay. Edge of action. This is kind of like a revert um, because they nerfed it in PVP, uh, the DR of the bubble in PVP, or the, I think they nerfed the health in PVP. And then uh, in PVE, it melts like butter in like any content that enemies are shooting at it in. And um, this is really nice. We've been using edge of action in speedrunning recently and the bubble pops pretty quick. So uh, having it have an 85% DR is really, really nice. And I'm glad they made it only partial DR against bosses because obviously on a day one like Crota or something, you don't want to be, you know, having just people spam edge of action. Seems a little, seems a little silly, a little broken to have 85% DR against bosses. So this is a good proportional change. Uh, Manticore, this is a quality of life change. I don't th think this is going to make this meta at all, um, but it does seem nice. It, it seems like uh, you might be able to use it to float small distances when you're not on heat rises or on like warlock with heat rises or lion rampant or something like that. Um, they also gave it some quality of life changes where you don't accidentally activate it. You can disengage the uh, anti-grav mode, which is nice, but I don't foresee this being like a, an insanely good weapon or anything like that. Um, X Dearest. Yeah, this is interesting. Impact is really, really small por uh, portion of X Dearest damage, but the maximum rate of fire change is pretty nice. I'm actually looking forward to using this in maybe like a triple GL swap rotation. Um, the big problem with GLs and distance rotations is the fact that, um, you know, GLs just don't auto -load, auto, auto load fast enough for them to work in really fast rotations. But X Dearest, of course, doesn't have auto loading. You can dump all of its reserves. Uh, indefinitely, so I'm interested to see how this kind of plays out and maybe like a Wendigo rotation or something like that. Um, the rest of this we don't really care about and now we have perk changes. Okay, um, this is really nice. I don't think it's going to make heal clip meta, but this doubles the effect of cure. If you didn't know, cure gives you 60 health per stack of cure. So this, effect, this effectively doubles the effect, right? It gives you 120 health, which is pretty nice. I don't know if that's going to make it really, really worth using, but it's still pretty cool. Um, you know, in a sandbox where resto and you know healing effects woven mail really easy to come by i don't think it's you know the best thing in the world but it's still a good buff nonetheless okay trench barrel being activated by ranged melee attacks this is mostly nice for um okay i'm not gonna lie to you most people just don't use trench barrel at all um this is more so for uh i think it's useful in speedrunning uh in certain encounters in you know raid speed runs dungeon speed runs whatever you have to nuke down a mini boss pretty quickly and you might have only access to like celestial fire or something you want to proc trench barrel ahead of time this is very much a quality of life change in that regard, but I don't think this is going to be particularly useful for like a general end game PVE build or something like that. So pretty helpful, but I don't think it's, uh, you know, insane. Unless we get like a trench barrel one to one shotgun. In that case, this is going to be really broken, but we don't have one of those yet. Um, barrel constrictor, that's a PVP change, loose change, awful regardless, and that's kind of like a PVP change. Uh, dual loader, this is nice, but you know, still not really a, a change that I, I care about that much. Uh, text balance stock, that's a PvP change. Okay, Envious. Uh, this has not been extensively tested yet. We will test this later today, but I don't foresee this being a significant change, and I think Envious will still be a very good perk to use on stuff like Cold Comfort. Uh, I could be wrong. I really hope that Cold Comfort still manages to make it to 4 in the mag. Uh, if it doesn't, that would suck, but we'll see what happens. Uh, bait and Switch. A lot of people were uh, asking me if this was going to like you know nerf Bait and Switch into the ground, or if it would be like horrible now or something like that. This is not a noticeable difference in anything, right? I mean, like if we pull up the calculator, right? We do 1.3 divided by 1.35. That's like a uh, 4%, under 4% damage difference. Not noticeable in basically any context. So, you know, fine. I'm fine with Bane Switch being nerfed. Um, you know, I kind of liked it at 35, but whatever. It's not the end of the world. And um, it doesn't really change anything. Uh, one-two punch. I was told that 
This makes it uh, so you can't do two frenzied blades after one one-two punch shot. So it makes strand rotations a little bit more annoying on Titan, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, that doesn't change too much. It's kind of whatever. Um, that's quality of life. This uh, is not really significant. Yeah, deconstruct. This is what I was talking about. That uh, it pulls ammo from thin air. So we we now know that this is intentional and not a bug. So this is pretty nice. Deconstruct is a is a good perk, and uh, I'm glad it works with explosive damage. So now hopefully it'll work with the wave frame in the way that I foresee that it will, and that will make it very strong. A deconstruct wave frame, if it does work like I think it will, that will be very strong. It'll be like an infinite ammo wave frame. So I'm pretty hyped for that. Uh, sundering. Don't care that much about this perk or this origin trait rather. Uh, hatchling quality of life change and this is a pvp change uh okay so that's it for weapons i'm gonna briefly talk about the spec mods um all this does by the way these these mod changes mean that on your rocket launcher in a gm or your linear or whatever heavy weapon you're using you should now use boss spec instead of major spec uh before you would use major spec because champs are considered mini bosses and mini bosses are rolled into major spec now you're gonna use boss spec because champs are mini bosses and that's part of boss spec now so this is actually really helpful because it's a good change for gms because now you can kill uh you can target champs with your rocket uh, and do more damage to them and you can also target the final boss of the gm with your rocket which is obviously a boss so that's pretty helpful and i'm happy about that let's uh keep going let's keep going okay we got some ability changes i didn't actually read through all of these so i'm just gonna briefly skim over them now um, this is obviously a change that people were begging for, for like ever since Solar 3.0 came out. Why does my fire sprite reset my restoration down to three seconds, blah, blah, blah. So I'm glad that this is finally being addressed. Knowing Bungie, it's probably not completely fixed unless they did like a complete backhand overhaul. I really hope they did. And I'm excited to see what happens. This personally didn't really affect me that much because I kind of knew how to play around it. I think a lot of people kind of started learning how to play around it. But, um, you know, if it truly is fixed, I'm happy for it. And, um, that's good. Uh, Empyrean. So... <clears throat> this is interesting. I don't know why they extended this to 15 seconds. Uh, Empyrean is strongest on Solar Hunter and Solar Warlock, specifically on like Sunbracers and like anytime you're on Solar Hunter and you need to extend your healing grenade duration. 15, okay. The, <laughs> the thing about Empyrean that um, made it so strong is that yes, you can extend the duration, but the, the kind of the weakness was whenever you were about to run out, right? Whenever you're running between maybe two ad groups and you don't get a kill for an extended period of time, they basically increase the forgiveness of this fragment. So yes, this is technically a nerf and a buff, so it's kind of like a neutral change, but this being increased to 15 seconds is just a buff in my opinion, right? Because on Solar, Solar is an incredibly offensively potent subclass. And no matter what class you're on, whether you're on Solar Titan, Solar Hunter, Solar Warlock, it is so easy to get Solar kills constantly. And so this is not really going to change anything, but this is going to make the fragment more consistent, make sure that you have Resto pretty much all the time. So um, I think it's a buff overall. I think it's a buff overall. So I'm I'm happy about that, I guess. Um, Ember of Mercy, again, this is kind of in line with this change. Makes sense. Uh, Threaded Spectre, Detonation change. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be particularly uh, useful in PvE. I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think so uh this is nice this is nice ensnaring slam uptime in pve that's cool that's fine uh, i'm not a big ensnaring slam lover but uh i'm gonna have to try it out when i do the exotic builds video in, in the near future so i'm excited for that i suppose um this is fine okay i'm curious about this this might fix the environmental threadling duplication glitch where you could throw a threadling grenade at an object and have it bounce off and duplicate the threadlings i don't know if this is related to that or not um yeah, like stuff like this. I'm not sure if they changed that or not. We'll see. Uh, Arcane Needle. This is really nice. Uh, I think Arcane Needle is possibly the most annoying projectile melee in the game to like hit on enemies that are moving around a lot. So I'm glad that they uh, changed this. I don't think it'll affect PvP that much. And PvE, of course, that is a very welcome change indeed. And um, yeah, let's see what else we have. Consecration. I think this is just a quality of life slash uh, radius change. So that's pretty nice. This is nice so you don't like, you know, die when you use Gunpowder Campbell and blow yourself up. Uh, I don't think this was a huge issue. I think Omni had a uh, pretty fine melee uptime from what I remember, even post changes. But this is fine, I suppose. It's a small quality of life slash buff. Flashbang Grenade. I didn't even know this was a bug. So that's cool. I mean, I barely use Flashbang Grenade. I use it on Arc Hunter sometimes, but that's cool, I suppose. And uh, I didn't even know that was a thing. So that's cool as well, I suppose. Um, that's it pretty much, I think. Let me go ahead and look at my notes. Is that it? I believe that's it. Okay. Well, well, well. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed me talking about the 7.3.5 March 5th update. Um, this is a big change. So I was anticipating a lot of the stuff that was coming here. 
uh, pretty excited to talk about it. Over the next couple days, you will see me release changes to the damage spreadsheet. I will update the exotic weapon tier list, the origin trait tier list, the perk tier list as well. And after that, I will be making uh, exotic build videos when I'm farming GMs or doing GMs. Uh, basically, the concept is I'm going to be using every single exotic armor build in the game um, in a GM and, you know, seeing how those pan out. And I'm sure some of these things will come into play when I am playtesting those builds. Uh, that's pretty much it. Stay posted, stay tuned in, and um, I hope you guys enjoy earning games. Bye-bye!